So basically, support library is providing components, rich set of components to the older APIs, older versions of Android, going mobile platform these days. And with that, they need to think about the past, think about the older devices. For that, Android has support libraries. And when we talk about support libraries, we are like, oh. Library is divided into the versioning that is supported for the API level. So if we talk about v4 api so that is providing support and components that are available in the new version of androids to the older apis that is api 4 if you are talking about v7 support library it is supporting the api level 7 so it is like that the platforms are not defined in a way that is a semantic versioning so say for example if you release a version 1.0 for one software that means it is a semantic version 1.0 if something new enhancement has been made in the software, you will be calling it 1.1, 1.2. And if it is a major release, it will be 2.0. But in the case of support library, it was not there. Because they are named with the API labels that we have. So what we see here is the dependencies that we usually add up in our project. So all these dependencies and the most tedious thing is to manage the versioning here. How many of you see that error that you can't mix up the version numbers for the support libraries? Android Studio keeps on complaining you, you can't do that. Just because if you mix them, it will give you the compile time error or runtime errors. Because some of the components are not available in some support library and other components are not available in other support libraries. And finally, you have to add, if, if say for example, you went to add a view pager in your project you need to add, say for example, a design library in it. And with design library, you have thousands of other classes needs to be imported in your project that are useless. So being uh, said that, you need to add more things in your project even if it is not necessary. And then it will take a universe to be built. And finally, when it builds, so it is not the phone. It is not the phone with edge. It is the refactored version of our own support library. So with the help of this, now you don't need to bother about the versions that you have. You just need to add Android X library and it is divided in such a manner that you can easily uh, get the components that you need. I mean, if you want the view pager, you can only get the dependencies related to that only. So that is the things now let me talk about what are that there in the android x so ah it's not working i guess okay okay yeah so so all libraries are broken into the smaller parts as i mentioned before so now it has a semantic versioning it has like fine grained things in it then feature based maven group ids and uh, features. So how many of you know that the, how the repository structure works when we add any dependencies, how that works? G Center, Maven. Android Studio now has direct option. You can right click and search from Google directly from the Android Studio, right? So it has feature based Maven group ID and artifact ID that allows you to define the packages and structures that are available. It is not tied, as I said, with the API version. So if I say v4, now the version 4, that is 4.0 of the Android X in the future, will not be tied to the Android API level 4. Each package has its own version. So if you are adding a view pager, then view pager will have its own version. If, if any new enhancement has been done in view pager, it will have that semantic version. And the last, last version of the normal support li library is 28.0.0. So after this, you must have to use Android X. So start learning, guys. It is very easy to go to Android X. It has clear separation. So now if you see anything in your project with Android.star, that is bundled in the platform. That is the library or the classes that are available in the Android platform itself. If you see anything with the Android X, that is the extension library, the support library. And then add that access for extension. 
So we have updated the packaging, refactored the Android X Java packages as you can see Android X dot feature, the name of the feature, say for example, I consider view pager. So Android X dot view pager dot the class name. So it is like that. Then Maven naming scheme, Android X feature colon feature, you just read it, right? We don't, we don't use it actually because this is already provided. So we just consume it as I said and remove the semantic version numbering. So as I said, V7, V4 are not, not that much tied to the API level. So this is the mapping that they did for the support libraries. So these are the, uh, on the left side, these are the older APIs and they are refactored to the Android X, that is the right side. And uh, Google has provided whole mapping of thousands of classes on the developer portal. So you can look at. And now the question is, how to migrate to it? I, if you have already existing project that is working and it is not having Android X, so in that case, what you can do? Our best partner, Google Android Studio, has providing us option directly to migrate to Android X. So what you need to do is, you just need to press the refactor and select the migrate to X option from the menu. And it is available after Android Studio 3.2. So you need to update your Android Studio. And one more thing is there, you need to have at least compile SDK version 28 to support this. So you have to update yourself as a developer as a student as a learner you need to update so this is what i need to say now what about the third party libraries say for example you are using glide in your project now android studio can't migrate the binary files so for specifically binary files we have jetifier this is kind of a thing that converts your project to jetpack so jetifier will allow you to migrate your binary files that is jar and r files AAR files, it will convert all the uh, binary files that are available in your project to the Android X. It will do binary refactoring for your project. So what's new in Android X? As all the library components, Android X is also having new. And honestly speaking, this support library 228.0.0, that is the last release of the library, as I said, does not have anything new. It has just come up with the Android X. So Android X has new recycler view selection, so you can create a selection like Google Photos where user keep long press and go to the round to selecting all the items in the recycler view. That is recycler view selection. And there are much more in the grid cycle also. Then it has high efficiency image format, H-E-I-F. Can anybody tell me what is H-E-I-F? Do, do you know what is H-E-I-F? G-I-F, you know, right? That is for animating the images and having them in your slide, right? Oh, sorry. So uh, HEIF is the new image format that is providing more in terms of size, space, and dimensions. So as compared to JPEG, that is JPEG, it is providing high efficiency. So now with the Android X, you can have support for those images also. Then the new design library, the new design components are available in this library. So you can avail that those components also. Then slices, better accents, and the browser accents. Browser accents are the accents that you can integrate in the context menu of the inbuilt browser. Do your apps have inbuilt browser, the web view? Sometimes we, we use this to present websites in our app directly, right? So in the context menu of that, you can provide your own custom actions to the users. Like say for example, if you want to put rating or something, you can just provide that context menu directly using the browser actions. Now let's have a look on Android app bundles. Have you ever seen the new option while building the APK in the Android Studio? You see it as app bundle, right? So what is it? What is app bundle? How many of you didn't download it PUBG just because of size? <laughs> we all have this problem, right? The space and the storage in our phone is very less. I'm not talking about the richest people here. <laughs> so for me, I haven't downloaded this game and not able to check it out, what is it? And that's why, just because of the size, it has 1.5 GB size. So the best benefit I can say for the app bundle is this. 
So app bundles provide smaller sizes for the APKs to download. It has easier management of APK and the versioning of your APKs. Simple comprehensive ar artifact which is replacing the APK on the Google Play. So previously what we were doing is we were generating the APK, we were signing the APK and we were uploading that onto the Play Store. Now it has a new concept called dynamic delivery. So dynamic delivery will work like this. You upload an app bundle on the store and Play Store will generate the APK splits and those splits will be delivered to the devices. So APK will be generated on the Play Store, not on your studio. Let's have a deeper look. Uh, so bundle is not the APK, so you can't install it on your device, as I said. It contains metadata files, the data that is telling what are inside this particular bundle. It has AAB extension, that is Android App Bundle, and you can generate directly from the Android Studio. It is supported after the Lollipop, that is Android L, so before you, you can't use Android App Bundles. So these are the things that are available in the bundle. When you generate a bundle from the studio, it has DEX files, native libraries, resources, assets, metadata, Java, and last but not the least, the manifest. How to create a bundle? You all may know this particular thing, how to generate the bundle. So you can select build APK and then bundles. So this is, this is the interesting things here, how the distribution works. So when you upload the Android app bundle, there is a common things that is that is needs for, uh, needed for every devices that have app bundles, right? Uh, the, so for so for example, your Dex classes. So for all the devices, you need that class files. So those with those particular files, Play Store will create a split. Split APK means something that is generated on the store and it is stored on the store itself. So the base is the thing that is necessary for all the devices. That is base split and with the configuration of the devices, different kind of APK splits will be generated. Say for example, for the screen densities, different densities related splits will be generated. For the ABI filters, different kind of architectures, the uh, splits will be generated. And with the localization, different languages also, the splits will be generated. So let's have a look how it is delivered. Say for example, I am using Pixel 2 Excel device with the English as my native language and XXHDPI as my density and the architecture is ARM64. So now from the splits, the store will only choose my related contents. It will choose the density that I have, it will choose the language that I have and it will give me that particular APK. So think about the size. Previously it was bundled, the standalone APK, bundled with all the things together it was having so many, uh, in terms of size, there were so many things because we need to deliver all the contents and then platform picks the best one. So how, how it, it delivers to the pre-Lollipop devices? So say for example, as I said, it is available in the Android L. So pre-Lollipop devices will have the standalone APKs and for the devices after, it will have the splits. So the same thing that we were doing previously was happen happening here. Now what about the app signing? So when we upload, we sign app with our certificate, right? But in terms of this, Google will generate, Play Store will generate the APK runtime when needed, right? When user is downloading the APK, at that time that will be generated. So in that case, you need to enable Google app signing. If you are using developer account, if your company allows you to do so, so you may have seen that particular thing that just enable signing in for the API. So that is possible just because the release key you need to provide to Google and then they will sign the APK with that key. What about this particular guys who have third party vendors of and the third party stores? Play Store has support for app bundles, right? But what about these guys who are not supporting app bundles? So there is specific repository called bundle tool. That tool is available on the GitHub. So these guys can adopt that and uh, they can improve their platforms to support this particular distribution. And this is what the main purpose of this. We saved 20% of the space on the user's device. Now, on the runtime, one question came in my mind that suppose I am an English user and I downloaded app in English. Now, after a few days, 
I went some other country and I changed my language. What about that APK that I have downloaded? So there the word is the dynamic delivery. Whenever user is changing the screen densities, whenever user is changing the languages, the Play Store will detect it and Play Store will download all the apps that have this kind of bundles. All the apps will be updated runtime by the Play Store. I think you can clap for this. So this is this is the thing that Google is thinking about and uh, they, they improve the things together. So I'm very happy to tell this that all the developers here should adopt the bundles and don't provide the APKs from now. Start using the app bundles, upload it and distribute it so your people who, who is using our app should actually download it at least. New in testing, what's, how many of you do the testing, honestly? How many of you write test cases? And how many of you love to write test cases? <laughs> I appreciate you guys. So writing test case is very important for any product that you have. So you must write test cases. So new things in test cases. So previously, it was not having Kotlin support. Now it has first class Kotlin support. So you can now write your test cases in Kotlin as well. Then new API to reduce the boilerplate codes and what's that new API is. Before it was like this, asset equals unit to give the visibility to the visa and, and if something fails, it gives you the error like this. Failed, expected zero, but was 16. But you won't know what is zero and what is 16, right? Does anybody know that visi visibility dot visible means zero? People who dig into that may know it, right? So this is thing, and now it is improved, so it will give you the more uh, visible things. I mean, you can understand what the exact error that has been occurred in my test cases getting failed. So that is the new enhancement in it. Then we have enterprise apps. How many of you work for the enterprise apps? What is enterprise apps? I have a small video here. I would like to show all of you. While completely independent of outside apps, so employees get to use their favorite apps, while your company apps and data stay safe and secure. And if a phone gets lost or an employee leaves, it's easy to lock down or wipe company apps without interfering with their personal ones. What's personal stays personal, what's work-related stays work-related, and you have a lot less to worry about when it comes to liability. If you use company-owned devices, Android lets you manage every aspect from data usage to Wi-Fi and tons more. And in Android Oreo, IT can separate work and personal data using a work profile, even on a corporate-owned device. If you need single-purpose devices, say for a kiosk, you can perfectly tailor any kind of Android to suit your needs. From preventing sleep mode to locking an app on screen with no other buttons to get in your user's way, You'll have the flexibility to choose from the world of Android devices, combined with the ease of controlling them all with a single management solution or EMM. Whatever your setup, whatever your needs, you control the apps employees choose from through a managed version of the Google Play Store. And you can even silently push a curated set of apps to any device to make setup a breeze. Android, the widest range of business devices to suit your needs and budget, and one comprehensive way to manage it all. Okay, so there are new enhancements in this also. So you now get what is enterprise apps, right? So how many of you developing enterprise apps? Great, so now enterprise, enterprise apps have the work profile tab. As you can see, this tab allows users to separate the apps from the personal apps and the professional apps. So now user can have the separate tab for the professional apps they have. Then the logged app on the devices. Uh, have you people used kiosk somewhere in the passport office or somewhere? Have you seen the Android kiosk? And have you ever tried to dig into that to go to the home screen by, the, by any mean and go to the menu, try to that, right? So now, now it won't be possible because it has now capability to log the particular apps. So these apps will only work in this 
in the in the particular version of the en enterprise apps. Then the firmal users. Firmal users are the users who uses the device. Uh, say, for example, in the flight, if you use the kiosk or the TV in the flight. So th this kind of user who are the temporary users of this particular device. So this is called firmal users. So for that also, you, you, you will have a complete interface. Then we have RTT, and this is the most important topic today, the RTT API for location. So we all know that the GPS is pay, playing very good today. So with the RTT, that is a round trip time API, that is API that provides in-house distance, in location. So you now you can get the location of the user inside the building. So previously, the accuracy was not that much. So when you need the location, you get the approximate location, and you will have that with the help of network provider. GPS altogether gives you the most possible, better, accurate location of the user. So with the Wi-Fi, uh, th this is the new technology called RTT. So this API provides the distance from the access points, the Wi-Fi hubs available in the building. So that, 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 uh, that is called round trip because it is, the distance is calculated with the help of packet being sent to the device and it, it is getting back to the device after sending it to the access point. So with the help of that, we, need, we can get the accuracy to the one meter. So if I move from here to here, I can get my location with the help of this. It is dis calculating, as I said, the distance from the access points available then you don't need to connect to the access point. This is the main point. So for getting the location, you don't need to connect to those access points. Then it requires specific set of hardware that, that, that should be there in the device and on the access point as well. Then this is the most important thing. Our fuse location provider that we usually use to get the location will have this automatically inbuilt in the future. So if there is an access point that is capable for RTT is near you, it will automatically grab that and it will give you the best possible location for the user. Then we have deep linking. How many of you done deep linking so far? Great. So with the deep linking, what is deep linking? So basically, you see the Facebook, right? You, you, you are browsing through the Google search and you see the Facebook link. If you click on it, it will directly take you to the app, not in the app, actually it will take you to the, the particular activity in the app. So if you are searching for a particular thing, if you click on it, it will directly dip into that particular thing. So how it is possible? It is with the help of deep linking. So to enable deep linking in the app, just this common thing that we do, Android View, this is the two things that categories that we are adding as a browsable, that is important category. So after you add it, this is the main thing, the data you are providing your domain from where your people, uh, your users will be clicking and then you are providing the scheme that is the HTTP or HTTPS, whatever it is. So all together it will look like this. So what it will do is it will verify your app and the authenticity that you own this particular app. And for that, you need to generate a statement. There's, there is a there is a thing called statement list generator. With the help of this, you need to get, just give me a moment to got into that. Sorry. So here you just need to provide your domain from where your, your server-side code or server-side uh, the, the, the things are available on the server. So you, can, you have to give your domain. Then you have to give your package and your fingerprint. And after that, it will generate a statement that you need to include. And after that, your deep linking will be done. And whenever user is searching for that particular thing in the app, they can directly navigate to that particular browsable activity that is showing your content, whatever the content you want to show them. And with this, I would like to hand over to Dhruv Patel to tell you more about the slices.
Hello. Hello. Yeah. Thanks, Ayman. So, I'll be talking about this slice. I'll be short and sweet. Yeah. So, how many of you know the app actions? What are app actions? Okay. Can somebody tell me a brief definition? Anyone? Okay. Have you searched in Google? For example, you have taken some photos uh, back in when you were in trip or somewhere else. So have you created any albums? Have you created any folder on Google Drive? Uh, did you find anything else? Or uh, did you search for that same thing? Anybody? No. So uh, if, you, if you start searching in Google, uh, whatever content you have created in your uh, photos, Google Drives, or any application related to it, so it will show up in the search. For example, I have created my folder, uh, for example, say, resume. I need, I need a new job. So I create a resume and I can access anywhere. So when I need to send some resume to any company, so I just type resume and it will show up the Google Drive folder in the search and I can nav directly navigate to there. So app actions actually uh, helps user when they require the most. And the slices are the enhancement to it. So, yeah, not that slides. You can have after lunch, after no, my session. This is the slice I'll be talking about. This is a part of the jetpack. It is a behavior. And uh, let me try this. I haven't tried this one. OK. So what every user want, uh, if you, uh, maybe they have the, all the data needed. They need some information that they have created, any applications. Uh, for example, let's say uh, there is ISTTC application. It actually books the ticket or train. OK. Uh, for example, I am I'm actually work in Bombay. So usually I not book ticket from ISTTC. And uh, I create the one ticket, and I have the PNI number, and all those things are saved. So when I search in Google that, what is, where is my train, or uh, what is my train duration, time, any lunch, meals are available. So if IRCTC gives the Android slash info, no, integration, so it can also provide the information, OK, this time you have your train, and you can also be, uh, no, book meal uh, while you are in transit. So it, it is actually a remote view, but not the same. Uh, have you ever uh, no, worked with the remote views? Custom notification display, right? So similar like that, but not the same. Uh, it actually provides the control outside of your application. You do not have to open your application. It, uh, it just slices of that application you can access outside. Uh, button, toggle, sliders, these are the uh, basically uh, no, initial stage of the slices. It is not actually released in the, no, for the production. It is, uh, Google provides the test slider viewer. I'll be showing that. And uh, you can also navigate to the same application, just like uh, no, deep linking. OK. So on the right side, you can see the slices information. These are the templates available, header builder. So there is a single line text, double line text. There is a images, on the, or the actions are available on the right side. Toggle, you can all directly, you know, uh, for example, you can start or enable or disable the Wi-Fi there. And just a recent, uh, recent example that I have, for example, I want to book the Ola. So I just write there, search there, and it will give the information there. OK. This is the row builder. It is a similar like header, but you can also use both header and row. This is a grid builder. Um, so uh, you must have searched the photos, right, in Google. So how does it you know, give the UI? Not back in them. It, it was just similar like this. Uh, no, there is a four photos. It gives the information on this. And uh, same thing as weather. Uh, every application, every phone has the weather application installed in the uh, phone. So you write just weather, and it will show up the details and the forecast. Restaurant, uh, you have must you must have used the Zomato. So if you are uh, if Zomato integrates the slice, it can directly show up in the Google search. 
this is a template uh, where you can combine actually uh, grid template as well as the list. There you can see uh, this is the example of, uh, for example, I want to rent a home for one day or two day. So you can check in and check out time. You can, it just directly shows up on the screen. Yeah, interactive. This is something good, uh, interactive. Um, for example, I want to change the brightness of the display. I can also directly change there via searching. Uh, yeah, there is a better option of there in the setting option. Uh, you can also get right, you can also get uh, book rights. Uh, once you are search the song, uh, if there is a list available in the, for example, in play music, list is available and the playlist already you know, saved in the phone or it is on the remote. It will show up in your search result and you can directly play from there. You can also do some favorite and favorite things, play f backwards and forward. Okay. Uh, right. The text in yellow, is it visible? Okay, let me look. So on the right, there is a slice provider. It is actually a class of the content provider. How does it actually work? Uh, have you used the content provider? Yep. What does it do? Provides the content, right? Okay, so you have to create the slice provider. A uh, slice provider can be your application, can be other application. There is also one thing, the slice presenter. It can be your application and could be other applications. So if you have, let's build one application. For example, I want to book a ride. So it is a transit application, for example, Uber. So let's say I'm searching something that I want to go from Ahmedabad to Baroda. And uh, I just start typing in the Google, okay, uh, Ola for or the ride for the Baroda. It will automatically detect my current location. It will find out where the uh, Baroda city is located and it will go to the application. Let's say Uber has implemented the slice presenter as well as the slice uh, provider. So it will automatically find out the data or the what usually it does do. And it will show up in your search result as a slice, just like this. You can see here the get right. And uh, you can directly book from that. Uh, how does it actually work that you have a URI, you have to define the URI. Slice pr provider will give the, all the information. Uh, slice provider has the list builder, grid builder, and it will create a slice and it will show up on your result. Um, it is also interactive, for example, on data change. Uh, if you want to start, uh, no, start or disable no, Wi-Fi, when you get the information of the Wi-Fi, current state is not visible. For example, Wi-Fi is disabled. And it is async process, not the direct process. You cannot direct, uh, you, don't know, you don't get the uh, data from whether it is enabled or not, or if it, if it is searching. So it is async process, you cannot get the direct slice. So there is on change, in, uh, notify change, uh, when you have, Wi-Fi result available, it can automatically automatically uh, trigger the slice and you can also get the data on the Google search. So I think that's it. Ayman will continue after that. Thanks. Thanks, Guru. OK, with this, let's see what's new in the notifications in Android. So notification plays very vital role in the ecosystem of Android, as we all know. So user opens the Amazon app when they see the notification of offers, right? We don't usually go to these apps, usually we don't do this. So notification is very important. So what's new we have in the notification? First thing is support for images. Now you can have images in your notifications and this is directly from our Android platform. I'm not talking about the third party vendors who already did this, right? So this is now natively done so you can do it. Then we have smart replies. Again, you can provide smart replies for the messages and the conversation that you have. So you can set that and your user will be delighted with this kind of things that you do in your app. And it also have group conversation. So if two people are talking with them, you can directly have a group. Just one flag needs to be started as, a, as, a, as in code so that it will be converted to group conversation. 
So this is how it, it, it could be done. Let me see if laser is working. No, it's not working. So it is, it is basically a style in the message. So you can uh, prepare a style for your message and there is a new object called person is introduced as you can see on the first line. So it is specified object that defines the user, any user. So you can have its name, avatar, image, and all this stuff for the, that particular user. And you can set the message style. And there is one more thing that set group conversation. So this is the Boolean method that you can directly integrate in the notification builder so that directly it will be converted to group conversation. Then layout inspector. How many of you are using layout inspector so far? How many of you know what is layout inspector? So let me tell you this about who people don't know layout inspector. So it is providing the hierarchical view of the uh, views on the screen that you have on your device right now. So if you have any invisible views that you want to see, so you can get that from this particular tool that is inbuilt in the Android Studio. You need to go to the tools menu. From that, you need to take the layout inspector and there you will be able to see this. Let me tell you this. You just need to see, uh, select the device from where you need to capture and it will create a file that is captured file that have all the hierarchy of your views. Let me tell, let me show you this real quick because we have very less time now. Is the screen visible to all of you? What I just did is I got to the layout inspector. I selected the running app. My emulator is running now. As you can see, this app is running in the emulator. I just click OK. The activity that is running, I can choose from the activities for which I want to grab the screenshot, complete shot of the hierarchy. And after getting it, it will give me the whole structure of that particular app screen. As you can see here, I can click on the views, any view. Let me just zoom in. I can click on the views to see the hierarchy of that view. Just like this, on the left panel, you can see the name and IDs of the, each of the objects. And on the right pen, you can see the properties that are set for this particular objects. All the properties will be available here, so you can identify the hidden, hidden objects and the things, the views that are not visible on the screen. So you can easily debug and profile your apps. Then we have Android Studio Profiler. I would like to demo this also to you. So how many of you using the profiler so far? Did you see the profiler in the IO, right? It is the best possible tool for the developers that is available in the IntelliJ, the IntelliJ Android Studio. So with this, what you can do is, you can profile your app, you can monitor the performance on the app. First of all, tell me, who cares about the performance? Do you? Why? It is important to care about the performance of your app because if your app is not performing well, user will going to be uninstall it definitely. If I, I am the user, I'll, I will uninstall it definitely. So for that, you just need to go to the profile menu. Here it is. In the profiler, you can start a session. So previously, there was no session. You can run only one session in the profiler. So new thing available here is now you can have multiple sessions in single profiler and you can record the sessions as well. So to start a session, just press the plus button. You need the debuggable app installed on your device so that you can get all, th all the things available in it. You just need to select that. And the profiler will start. As you can see, it is providing me the profiling of the CPU usage, memory, network, and the energy consumption that device is making. And if the advanced profiling enabled, that is after Android 6, advanced profiling is available for the older older devices android profile uh, advanced profiling is not available so with the device having six connected to my uh, laptop or pc or i can see the memory heaps that is occupied i can get the chunk out of it and i can see the app heap in details that what is taking much space in here 
Did you see the magic? This is very important. As a developer, you must know how to use profiler. Let's see the network now. You can switch to the network from here. Let me start this continuity. This is attached to live now. So whatever events that occurs in the devices will be directly visible here. So let's do something that do the network request or something. Let me just go back and I hope my app doesn't crash. <laughs> Sometimes you all know emulator. OK, I'm doing this at to favorite. This is getting the API web call. And you can see now this is the API calls that happens in the background, right? So by selecting this chunk, I can see how many bytes of data received, how many kilobytes of data received and sent. I can click on that particular API call to see all the details related to it. I can see what was the URL, what is passed in the header, what is passed in the request, and what is the response for this particular request. So I can debug my network profiles as well with the layout inspector. So with, with, with this, sorry, not layout inspector, my bad, with the profiler, yeah. So you can do this also. With the live sessions, you can stop it from here. So profiling will be stopped. Let's start another session. We can see the energy usage. My app is not consuming that much energy. Let's do something. If you use any heavy things, such as location provider or any background services, so in that case, you will be able to see the memory usage. And each of this, sorry, each of these have this selection. So what, what kind of things that happens in the app, you can directly select and see it. The CPU usage, you can see the CPU usage of your app. So optimizing your app in a way that provides better qualitative experience to the user is very important. While as a developer, we normally don't think about such things. We even don't think about the size of your APK. We don't care. We usually don't care. We don't think about the internet connectivity. And we, we don't care about the API calls that we make. Sometimes we make thousands of API calls because we put the method in on resume. <laughs> right? We did this, right? But this, this should not happen. And with the help of this kind of tool, we can improve our quality, our quality of product that we are making. So this is it from my side. Thank you.